Welcome to Electron Line. Here we want to take another look at rolling friction and how we derive the equation. And also we want to take a look at the similar triangles here that we have. The one triangle when we start to add forces together and the other triangle when we look at simply the dimensions of the tire and the coefficient of rolling friction called B. Now when we add all the forces together, remember that F is the force required to overcome the friction. It's equal in magnitude to the friction but opposite in the direction. So this represents the force required to keep the wheel rolling. This is the weight of the wheel or the weight of the load and here's the reactionary force. And the angle phi here relates the three vectors. We have the weight, the reactionary force and the force required to keep the tire rolling and then we have phi right there. If we look at it from a pure dimension point of view, here we have the radius of the wheel to the point where the wheel is no longer touching the ground. We have B, which is the coefficient rolling friction, which is a distance, and then we have phi, and we drew the triangle right here. So if we're going to relate R, B, and the angle here, we can say that B, the coefficient rolling friction, is equal to the radius of the wheel times the sine of the angle phi because B is opposite to the angle. Here we can do a relationship between F, the force required to keep the, the wheel rolling, and the weight on the wheel or the load on the wheel. And we can do that and of course we can replace this F in magnitude by the friction force so we can say that the tangent of phi is equal by relationship the friction force which is the opposite side divided by the weight on the wheel. Remember that the magnitude of the friction force is equal to the force required to keep the wheel rolling. We can then say that the friction force can be defined by the weight on the wheel times the tangent of phi. We realize that these angles are always fairly small. So if we know that the angles are small, we can then say that the tangent of phi is very similar to the sine of phi. In other words, we could replace the tangent by the sine and then we can say that the friction force is equal to the weight times the tangent. Well, instead of the tangent, we can write the sine of phi. And the sine of phi can be defined as B over R. So we can replace that here. So we can say that the friction force can be defined as the weight on the wheel times B, which is a coefficient rolling friction, divided by R, the radius of the wheel. Now when you take a look at that, we realize that the friction force increases as there's more deformation of the wheel. As this becomes longer, we can see that as B doubles and triples and quadruples, that causes the friction force to increase. Likewise. And if the radius of the wheel increases, that shows then that the friction force decreases. So there's a lot of relationship between the radius of the wheel and the, the length of the deformation of the wheel against the surface. Now we also know that since the angles are small, that the weight is very similar to the reaction force. So we could say that this could also be closely related to the reaction force times B divided by the radius of the wheel. Now, to show you why we can say that and why we can say that the angles are small, let's say for a moment that B is 10% of R. Now, that would be unusual. Not very many wheels or tires are such that B becomes that large relative to R. But let's say that it is. Let's say that if B divided by R, the radius of the wheel, is equal to 10%, which is equal to 0 0.1, what would the angle be? Well, at that point, we can solve for that. We can say here that phi is equal to the arc sine of B over R. Which, of course, now we know that would be the arc sine of 0 0.1. So what would be the angle in that case? So we have 0.1, take the inverse sine of that, and it looks like we have an angle of 5.74 degrees. So phi is equal to 5.74 degrees. And if we now take the tangent of that angle, the tangent of 5.74 degrees is equal to, so let's take the tangent of that, and we get 0 0.1005, which is different from 0 0.1 by only 
0.5%. So the delta between the sine of an angle of 5.74 degrees and the tangent of an angle of 5.74 degrees is only 0.5%. And that comes, that difference comes if B to R ratio is 0.1, which is a very large ratio as it comes to wheels. So this transformation from the tangent of phi to the sine of phi is a very good transformation. It works almost always. And therefore, B over R can then be substituted for the tangent. And yes, for the tangent, because the tangent and the sine are virtually the same. And so we then validate that by using these similar triangles between the vectors of the forces acting on the wheel and the physical dimensions of the wheel and the deformation, which is known as the coefficient of rolling friction, we have an equation that is fairly robust under most circumstances. And so that's the equation we can then readily use for coefficient of rolling friction.